Pokemon trainer, but Wish is going to drop the knowledge, and if there's any set that I feel is going to be able to prove its worth, it's going to be in this. I feel like Zero Suit actually performs very well against the entire cast of characters that Pokemon trainer brings. I feel like she's able to outbox Squirtle, she's able to break zone on Ivysaur, and do we even got to really respect Charizard to be just a big kill stick? Yeah, he really does kind of get slapped up all around the board, right? Charizard are trying to make his way through the Paragon, but luckily we won't have to deal with that at least for a little bit because we are going to have the Squirtle on deck coming around, kind of slipping and sliding his way across the screen. And he's one of the few characters that can actually keep up with DSS, right? She's always darting around, making herself elusive, hard to hit, using the flip kick to get in and out of certain scenarios. But Squirtle, also someone who can slip and slide around himself. Absolutely. He's one of the quicker characters in the game, and the fact that he's so small lets him maneuver himself in interesting fashions. If anything, I feel like he's going to be able to outmaneuver CSS, if nothing else. But now we've got the Premier Ivysaur on deck. It's going to be a matter of how well Ivy is going to can, can he net the kills. I feel like that's going to be the important part, just because when Mars is on it, his Zero Suit is lightning fast. The Charizard, he did his job. He gets to chill on the bench until further notice. We're already first blood broken from top 32 winner's side. Just for those joining us now, this is the best of five set. So we got plenty of action here. If you're looking to see more of this Pokemon trainer work. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that you say that, right? Because Charizard really kind of serves the role as like the pinch hitter, right? You put him out, all right, you know, we need that one home run. We need a, that, that final hit, whether it's, it's a serve, whatever analogy you want to use for whatever sport. He comes in, he does the dirty work, and he gets out, and we save him for those moments. So Wish is doing an immaculate job of using the up smash, uh, easily one of Charizard's best options, and then quickly right back to the Squirtle, he seems to be uh, very comfortable here. Now, I already had a chance to highlight a bit of what makes Wishes such a great personality here in Tri-State, what makes him such a strong player for New Jersey, but got to give it a little bit of New England bias. Tell us a little bit, how has Mars been rocking the field lately? Well, so Mars, Mars has actually had a pretty good season. I think everybody knows him at this point. Um, of course, he did have that 25th at Genesis 6, was pretty good, and he got 17th at Frostbite, but he did lose to Ned and T. Ooh, see this Ned play. Pokemon trainer, big dog. So you know that Mars does have a history of struggling a little bit with this character. So we're going to see how he's going to be able to do with someone who some would arguably say is just the better one. Now, early on in Ultimate's lifetime, a lot of people were saying how Mars was struggling a bit. He wasn't getting the results that was expected of him at New England locals. He wasn't seeing it in large like, tournaments. And he sees some maybe questionable losses of his skill level, but I feel at the same time, he's proven his worth time and time again. Having recently taken multiple sets of MK Leo, another player regarded as one of the best in the business right now, but wishes he's doing this dance phenomenally so far. Both of these players trading stocks left and right, and it's hard to even say who has the true lead because stage control has been a very difficult road to walk for both of these players. I mean, Jesus, man, it's just the moment Wishes gets that Squirtle out and starts pushing for those tilts into grab conversions. It really seems to be a struggle. Oh my god, you gotta be careful there. Yeah, man, Ibisaur will toss that out on you real quick with that Vine Whip. Wanna make sure you don't fall into the. Oh no, he's dead. He's dead. The moment I saw that Razor Leaf hit, I said, that's a wrap, big dog. He is off the top. Razor Leaf is such an important tool in this kit. Not just because it's a zoning tool, not just because it's a projectile you can angle, it's your hit confirmed. And Ivysaur can close that distance so mm -hmm. well. We talked a little bit about this earlier when Wishes was earlier fighting Dark Lizzie. Oh. And look at that. It didn't matter if he was going in with the, if he wanted to threaten with Vine Whip, if he wanted to try and go for the read. He saw that Mars just didn't react in time from getting hit with the Leaf. Also, a big hitbox up air, blasting oh out of the God, sky. Dude. And I can't even really say it was a close match, to be honest with you, Flambeau. Because even though those stocks were looking tied, that whole time it looked like it was Wishes commanding where the battles were taking place. I feel like that's going to have a huge role in the set as a whole. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, right, it, for Wishes, it never seems as if there's any doubt about when he can get a kill from him. He'll either switch to Charizard and then get the kill effective immediately. You don't really see those kind of moments of, oh, I'm scrambling the neutral a little bit, trying to find that. It's like, no, I know right now I can do an up smash right now. I can get a grab. I'll go for that up throw, confirm the KO. Or if he's playing Ivysaur, he'll be like, all right, I'm going to do my Razor Leaf in the up air. Or maybe from around 40-ish percent, I'll go for Nair and a Vine. I'll get KO like that equally as well. Pokemon Trainer has setups. And Wishes is proving just how comfortable he is. Now, I feel like one thing that Mars can be doing with Zero Suit's kit especially is it just sort of break around a lot of the zoning, a lot of the hitboxes that are threatened 
by Squirtle and Ivysaur by trying to check with Nair and back air. These are one of those heavy hitting uh, spacing tools I feel would go a very long way because one thing that Mars has been doing a great job of is threatening damage. And even though he's kind of struggled to secure his kills, if he could just keep on beating on them and take advantage of the fact that Ivysaur not really that heavy, or at least not as heavy as the character feels, and Squirtle being one of the lightest characters in the game, you can get your kills very early on on them and Throwing out that up special, that's how he's gonna go, and look at that, we can see a couple of taunts out of Mars. And immediately the switch to Squirtle as well, like, very clearly shows how Wishes wants to play this matchup, and who he thinks uh, which Pokemon is the best suited for dealing with a character like this, especially for ZSS. Uh, you know, Squirtle with that low profile can be a little difficult to hit at times, but Mars has always been adept at doing those fastball aerials at very rapid timing for you to feel like, man, when do I get to move? Yeah, I think it's it's that feature specifically that's going to help Mars in the longer of the set. While I feel that Wishes has been playing phenomenally thus far, I really do think this is going to be a close set. This could potentially be our first game five of the day. But I'm I'm curious to see like what's the approach that Mars is gonna take to do this. We've seen him throw out a couple of wary moves to go for the kill. And that's one thing I hate seeing out of Mars' plays when he fishes for a kill. Because leaving himself open for kills is going to lead to kills where we just don't have to work as hard for it. And that can have a big impact on like the mental fortitude of these players. Yeah, you know, I I'm watching and one thing I'm noticing is that generally, uh, you know, we would talk about how characters that had like a, a movement special, whether it was monkey flip, uh, flip kick or, or bouncing fish, uh, to kind of use to get out of the juggle scenario. Mars, when he tries to go for that, if Ivysaur is on the screen, Wishes will just use Razor Packs, huh? Yo, sometimes he could just die? Yeah. Make-A-Wish Foundation is out in full <laughs> effect. Thank you, Mars, for the donation, but we're going to keep it lively. And of course, speaking of donation, make sure you check out that Goodwill event that is in collaboration, I believe, with 2GG or something like that. That's coming up. But with that said, we're going to continue keeping it going. Mars, despite that uh, unfortunate SD, looking like he's in a pretty good spot still. Yeah, I mean, he's been putting out these these moose kicks. He's been really trying to threaten kill, and that's what I want to see. Excellent attack from Wishes, keeping him alive just a little bit longer, and I was honestly worried right there. Same. But he had mad time, though. <laughs> yeah, mad time. He, like, got stuck on the platform. I was like, all right, all right, whatever, whatever. I'll just fall down, boost kick. We still good. Confirm the KO. Mars now, you know, has been able to maintain the lead for the vast majority of the set, but this is kind of the scenario where I'm like, he needs to get... Oh, no! Look oh! at that! Oh! That's what I want to see. Mars! That's how Squirtle kills. Everyone always asks, oh, Squirtle, he's dealing combos, but where is his kills? You can fish for pratfall and get so much off of it with Squirtle. You saw that Wishes was in position to either go for the jam lock into forward smash, or even in that position, not even skip the fourth play, go right for the kill. That was my friend. <laughs> Was. He had a whole <laughs> life ahead of him. I had so much in store for him, but he just got completely removed in the blink of an eye. That's why you got to make sure you go out and tell your friends you love them, because they could be gone tomorrow. And Mars disappearing with that stock. Here we have a last stock scenario. Wishes fighting back so strongly, finally managing to pull ahead in this game. I'm curious to see what Mars does. Oh, God, not running. again. Yo, he wanted it so badly. Yo, honestly, there are times where Wishes, he'll, he'll just go for it just because he's feeling himself. I don't like that about him as a player, but like, you gotta, sometimes you gotta remember who, who you're fighting. Oh no. Oh no. But you know, that's what I was saying, right? The moment he switches to Charizard, he wastes no time. Back air, get body, right? It's a good move. It's not as good as it was in previous iterations, but it's still it's, a it's strong still, move. It's strong as hell. It's strong as hell. And I can tell Mars, he's probably pissed off because he was running the entire game it was going at his pace. He was saying, all right, you know, I'm going to keep it pretty quick. I'm going to slow it down. Everything seemed to go, go according to plan. But then Wishes proving, hey, you know, I, you, I, I was talking about, oh, yeah, you know, Ivysaur got kill setups. Uh, Charizard got kill setups. But he's also like, yeah, I can use this tilt to force a hard knockdown scenario and then go for a tech chase, read with a smash. And look what that did to Mars. It completely shattered his mentality. Was, in this house, we respect Squirtle. If nothing else, we respect this character. You see him getting on the damage, and Wishes has been doing a great job of utilizing Squirtle for wrapping up the damage, letting Ivysaur take the lead. But let this be a way to show that every part of Pokemon Trainer's kit can be threatening. I just, I want to see Mars take a different approach to this game, though. When he was getting very aggressive, staying extremely mobile, things were looking a lot more in his favor. 
Yeah, man, and that, that low profile of Squirtle was coming into play once again. We just saw Mars try to do a fast fall back air, and it just like completely whipped his head somehow. It was like, wow, you just probably get the timing a little bit off. But Wish is just finding a way to thread the needle every single time. Once again, oh no, nice yeah, going for the I tech read in again. You know, wild <laughs> for this one. And he I feels so comfortable. I think, I think. Oh, that's weird. I don't know that she screams. Anyways, <laughs> um, actually, one thing I like about how he's going for these wayward smash reads is that it, it also acts as a bit of conditioning. Like, oh, no, that's see, that's exactly what I didn't want to see. I don't want to see Mars th just sh throwing things out, trying to fish for the kill, because you, you start to lose a lot of what makes Mars such a phenomenal player. You lose a lot of these aspects of how well he could thread the needle, go in for his confirm, and keep the comic collected. I don't know, man. Like, at that point, right, he doesn't want to do something unsafe on shield. He knows what's going to happen, right? Up smash out shield, it's a wrap. Manages to kind of find an up smash of his own. But the other option that Wishes seemed to have been going for there was the up throw. He was just lucky that in that scenario, he was just like a pixel away from having that up throw land on the side platform. If it had landed there, he would have most certainly confirmed the KO with that seismic toss. But. Mars, you know, once again finding a very, very minuscule lead. In fact, I hesitate to even call it that because all he has is 10%, but trying to rack up more. Fishing for the grab with Charizard, you know what Wishes wants. He just wants to end the stock. He doesn't want to let Mars take any momentum. You have to remember, this is still a top caliber player. Mars is one of the premier names at this tournament. And even though Wishes is certainly no one that you can sleep on, you got to remember that this is man who's able to lock it down and really make every little inch out of that first stock count. But that's going to be that for that first stock. Not a lot of percentage racked up onto Wishes. Let's see what he can do here with Squirtle. And I have to say, I mean, I thought, what was a forward tilt that got shield grab there? I thought it looked like pretty decently spaced, but Wishes was like, nah, actually, peep this shield grab, goes ahead and gets that size toss off the top. And now we have this teenage mutant ninja Squirtle coming out again. I swear he got size or something in his hand. I don't know how he's boxing with one of the best intergalactic space warriors. It's one of the it's one of the best things about Squirtle in this match, because even though like Zero Suit has the tools to play around Squirtle. Like, Wishes is doing just a great job of stuffing out anything Mars throws out. One thing I would like to see Mars do a bit more of is actually use a bit more of the grounded options against Squirtle. We see that Wishes is going for a lot of that aerial pressure in Squirtle, whether it's down air or forward air. Mars can take advantage of the fact that Zerzu has a very quick jab, a down tilt that reaches far and low profiles amazingly. But we might not even get to that position. We see Wishes is on his last stock, but once again, Mars sitting on plenty of percentage, and we just have not really struggle to end out these stocks. Yeah, you know, I, I'm starting to wonder, right? Because we did see Mars in this exact same scenario in the past game. He was up by a little bit, had his opponent on the final stock, looked like he was doing pretty good, but then suddenly an explosive play from Wishes, and it was all she wrote. So I'm hoping this time around, you know, bias or no bias aside, I never like to see a player that we all know and love go. 3-0 in a set, you know what I mean? I always want to see at least one more game. I like seeing the adaptations happen, and it looks like Mars is figuring that out right now. That was a big fight ah! of getting himself back to the stage. <laughs> Every time I see a Razor Leaf hit, bro, oh man, I become a little girl in a school. It's because as soon as that Razor Leaf hits, Mars is going to roll the dice. He doesn't know what he has to worry about. If he goes too low, down air, the stage spike, tech chase. Again, follow him into the air. Go inwards, eat the up air, done. Go outwards, eat the vine whip. Done. Backwards? Well, then you're going to eat the back air. Then you're back in the dice roll. You can't afford to do that. And right now, Mars punching onto life. He's going to be taking that game three. See what we can do. He's got a little bit of more life in heaven. Here we go. It's OK. It's OK. He manages to secure one. That's good. Yes. That's a start. That's, That's how it starts, one. baby. But we do have to think about just in terms of the amount of KOs that Mars has been accruing with boost kick. Part of me wants to be like, has it been every single one? I, like, I wish I was actually just looking for that specifically, because I know he got one on the Squirtle pretty early, too. It was actually the fact that he was Squirtle and not a different character that got him KO'd for that stock. And he just got one on the Charizard right there. Boost Kick, he's like, all right, it looks like there's some aspect about the way that Wishes is playing that is putting him in positions where he's hitting Mars's shield unsafely. And Mars is like, I'm going to keep capitalizing on this until you make damn sure that you're spacing every single little thing. Well, Steph. Game four, bringing us on to Smashville. And I actually, I'm kind of worried about this pick. I feel like this is a stage that Zerus was able to navigate very well. Mind you, 
Pokemon trainer can navigate across the stage well with all three characters, so I think it's a really strong pick from Lucius. But he needs to sort of bring back what was making it such a dominant performance in games one and two. Stick on top of Mars. Don't let him get that opportunity to turn it around and punish him when he starts swinging hard. You know, and I think that on a stage like this, I expect him to stick with the Ivysaur more, mainly because of the way that middle platform is set up. It's going to set up for those up air juggles and potentially KOs very early. All right, Charizard back on the stage. I love Flare Blitz as a recovery option. It's not really worth that much. And even stalling at the ledge, fantastic option. But here he comes, swinging hard with Goose Kick. Mars starting to feel himself a lot more. And now things are looking a bit more traditional for him, but no doubt wishes out too soon. He's not going to let this slip away to a reverse 3L. You know, there Don't we go. Again, ahead. another KO to boost kick. You can go ahead and tally that on the board. That's another strike. Wishes he needs to be careful and scout out that option. If he's able to do something, kind of fade out, maybe bait the boost kick, he'll find himself a very juicy punish, which he can get something very creative going with. Oh, no. Oh, no. Boom. And there it is. Boom. We haven't seen it yet, Boom. but that's what I was talking about earlier. Wish is going for the, the tech roll read and going for the down smash over and over and over again was peak conditioning. The way that he was making sure that he wasn't showing his hand to Mars, waiting so that Mars wouldn't respond in turn. All of a sudden, missed that tech. Look what happens. Those fists come out, and Squirrel's able to even up the count. And let me tell you, man, like, it is potent. You know what I mean? Like, Mars was at, like, 90. That must have been, like, I, I don't even know, uh, liquidation or something, you know, like that, that move hits so hard. And for a lot of characters, they wouldn't necessarily uh, die in that scenario, but DSS, you know, kind of in that kind of middleweight class, right? Where it's like not too light, not too heavy, but somewhere around the middle. On top of that, Squirtle's very similar to Pikachu in how these jab locks operate. By that, I mean, not only can he jab, but he can take advantage of good initial dash speed to move the opponent just a little bit more, give himself more opportunity to be able to kill. Take note how it's the jab, run, jab, run, now going for the kill option, forward smash. That's why we're killing off the side with that so well. But we're back on Ivysaur, we're at these climbing percentages, and Blue's case just getting thrown out. All of a sudden, wishes on his last stock once again. Do you think we're going to game five at this point? I think we might be. I mean, every single stop. It's Blue's Kick is the name of the game for Mars right now. That's where he's putting all his chips. That's where he's getting the big bucks. My man might win the lottery. Oh, God. Oh, he, got this rate. he got spooked. I mean, I don't blame him. Yo, we're putting the fear of Arceus into folks out here now. <laughs> I want to know something. I, I actually, I love this Blue's Kick option that Mars throws out because it starts low. It's able to scoop on Squirtle, it's able to hit on Ivysaur, and it's kind of large enough hitbox it's able to reasonably hit Charizard too, no matter how Charizard tries to, miss, uh, to position himself around it. So it's no wonder to me why that's the move that we're seeing constantly picking off Mars. But look at the situation we're in right now. Man, and you see he goes real far off stage, and I love that he's doing it. Oh wait, could this be it? Is that enough? It should be. It should be clean, perfect. And even then, the DI wasn't like immaculate, but I don't think he could have survived that no matter what he did. That is all three stocks of that game gone to boost kick. And I know in the last game, at least two of those stocks were gone to boost kick. Keep the count at home, folks. It's, it's really getting a chance to show you what, like how well the player can adapt their kill potential. Because typically speaking, we see a lot of Mars' kills are accredited to ledge pressure, lead it into down smash, forward smash, mm -hmm. lead it into flip kick, okay, lead it into back air. It's much more traditional. It's what you've come to expect of Zero Suit in the early meta of Ultimate. But now, boost kicks at the ready, you would think you're watching late game smash four all over again. You think you're watching Mars at his prime all over again. It's how he has to play in order just to counter wishes. He's brought us to a game five, but I don't know if this right is gonna be able to end things out here on Town and City. Yeah, I'm saying, is the reverse 3-0 dream alive? Is that what's going to happen here? Because it looks like there is potential for that to be the case. Mars having an explosive start in town and city uh, might be a stage that Mars is actually really happy about. You know, if I'm Mars, I'm like, oh, this gives me a lot of opportunity to juggle. Uh, gives me some space to move around if I want to use my flip kick and maneuver around the platforms and cancel. I can do all of that um, with kick with cancel. But now I 
I also think this is a decent enough pick from Lucius because a lot of the Pokemon can maneuver around this stage really well. I feel like Squirtle himself can actually make use of his platforms to combo well. I feel like Charizard can also actually play a little bit of the game that he was more known for in earlier iterations with the platforms at hand. Nair and Fair get a ton of mileage at that. And more importantly, this is a larger stage. He's not going to be dying as early on any of his Pokemon when it comes to Boost Kick getting flown out. Yes, Squirtle, incredibly light. Yeah. Probably dying if that move's coming out. But Ivysaur, a little bit more life to live on. Charizard especially. I feel like that is going to be more vital than anything else in Game 5. Oh my goodness. Full hop Nair from ledge. But no, I think you bring up an amazing point. It really will spell the name of the game. But, you know, at this point, Mars has already racked up enough percent where it doesn't matter what character you are. Maybe Charizard could survive something from, like, center stage or from one side to the other. But he is in another very good position to seal out a KO. Has to find the final hit. Will it be another boost kick? Well, Squirtle's at bat. Let's see what Squirtle can do with these incredibly high percentages. In fact, it's just going to be Tom passing right off. See what Ivysaur can do. And he's confirming his kill. The crowd is roaring. New Jersey is here for their man. But just like that, you can hear New England returning. We even see the, the fist pop from Mars. Stocks going left and right. These boys are feeling themselves. This is what we come here to see. There is blood in the air for these players. Oh my god. Witches. One of the best Pokemon trainers to ever do it. Arguably the best Pokemon trainer to ever do it. Against Mars. One of the best ZSSs to ever do it. And God bless in this game, people don't fall out of boost kick like they would in Smash 4. You know what I mean? There's been so many sets ruined because of that. But now we have two juggernauts fighting on this stage. And I have no idea. No idea. I couldn't bet on this, Hangman. Who's going to come out on top? It's been so explosive from both ends. It truly is anyone's game at this point. But right now, Mars is demanding it to be his. Finally, now just getting eaten by a Nair. Can Wishes make it count? He gets the read, but he missed positions. His down air, just like that. He's got to work again to try and find Mars in that position. And Mars has been doing a great job of ducking and moving out of Ivysaur's control range. We see how well he's able to space around with back air. And now Charizard coming out at these incredibly high percentages once again. With Mars' speed, he could have gone for the raw bear. He could have done it, but we didn't see him do it just yet. These guys are in the zone right now. Forward are trying to pick off, and now we're back at the ledge. If Mars, you can't get hit by back air, and you can't get hit by Flare Blitz. You're at 76. That's like a pretty fine percentage to be at, but against this character, he has that explosive comeback potential. That is what Charizard has. Now, granted, his neutral options, sometimes they're not the best, but when he gets to explode, oh my god, that DI is! Yay! This hook. To be fair now, we haven't seen forward throw come out from Charizard, and it's fairly potent. So, catching on Pan TI, that was a bit of a, uh, bit of a stretch there. And any smaller stage, that could have been deadly. But, talking about small stages, Wish is even surviving from out deep. Coming back at 161, consider these climbing percentages. Good as gone. It is less stock situation. Max. Why has has stepped away from the... Yo, um, so, uh, you know what? I have no idea what's going on, but Mars is screaming at the crowd. He is peated. He is pissed. Mars I do not know what the hell is going on. Helper, you know anything? Apparently, some, apparently someone in the crowd was yelling, uh, twice. He said he jumped, like, twice. Oh, no. I see. Okay. All right, so. So. I uh, got the word in from Helper right now. Uh, apparently, uh, this crowd was being a, a bit too much, slash maybe somebody was yelling jump in the crowd or some kind of backseat coaching. And you know, in Smash, we had our whole coaching arc already. We went through it all. We already said no coaching. If you in the crowd, yeah, there's, up, there's, certain, there's certain limits to how you can cheer for a crowd. Because I'm like, Tri State's known for getting loud and rowdy, but we when got it comes our to something like that, yeah, when it comes to that, it's like, you pick up the players here and there, but that's not something that's typical of Tri-State. Yelling stuff out that's specific to the match, something like he's going to jump, mm -hmm. that is constituted as as coaching no, honestly, from our rules. It's something that's not allowed, and players and the audience has to respect that. And this is the first situation that I've ever seen where... So I've seen this once before, um, and that was at KTAR 20. Uh, it was zero versus I don't even remember who. Uh, but there was a moment where uh, he kept trying to... Rather, someone in the crowd, I don't remember who it was, but they kept yelling, yo, Zero's gonna flip kick right now.
He's gonna flip kick right now, and Zero got heated, right? I think he won that set anyway, but I remember he came up to Keitaro afterward. He was like, this crowd gotta go. AJ, yeah, no, what's the word? All right, we got Ajax on the scene. Ajax, give us the report. I mean, move this a little bit. Uh, so in the crowd, there was somebody who repeatedly said, look for his jump, watch his jump, multiple times, and Mars heard him. He kept saying, yo, he's coaching, and nobody was saying anything at all, so he just called RJ, and RJ, from the looks of it, they were playing game five at two stocks apiece. Not sure yet, but he um, definitely, right. like, we all heard them repeatedly all right, saying, yeah, no, that's, that's something that, that doesn't fly. That kind of shit don't fly with us, so... Uh, big respect to RJ opting for the replay. It seems like RJ's relaying that information now. Yeah, they're talking it out. Me personally, listen, I love I love wishes. I feel like he can earn that win on his own merit. I feel like he's the kind of player who doesn't need that kind of coaching. So if he finds himself in that kind of a situation where he's got a replay, I think that he can do it. Bro. And I respect that. I respect the hell out of Mars. So I it, hate it to sucks. See yeah, it, it, it sucks. really does because it pulls the energy out of such a great set, and now. It kind of muddies the water. Like, what happens now? Wishes wins it in game five redux. Is Mars going in with the same mindset? He's heated. This man is livid, pacing around the venue, demands something be done about this. RJ, bless his soul. He's looking to figure out the best situation, but stuff like this isn't easy. Dude, Mars, let me tell you, Mars from my home region, right? right? And he puts his heart and soul into the game. Absolutely. And I, I don't think anyone would, would question that. And in terms of, like, being salty, Mars isn't the kind of person no. who's, like, like, he gets salty. Yeah, sure, if he loses to, like, uh, another overclock to, like, Dark Wizzy or Light or something, he'll be like, um, he'll sit down in his, you know, his chair and he'll be like, man, like, this sucks. And he really gets in his own head about it. But if he's actually being vocal about yeah, what's no. happening to the crowd, in the crowd, it's it's something and it's, big. it's something legit. It's not. Like, it's not like, like that. Mars is Mars is the kind of player who we know him here at home as being. When I say home, just the Northeast. I feel like I see Mars at our events often enough. Like we know what's up with him. He's a very emotionally driven player. You see that in his pop offs. You see that in his reactions, wins or losses. Even in his play, you can see he's emotionally driven. So to see this kind of anger pop off from him, it's very rare and it's very unfortunate to see. But. Seems like Light is talking to him, trying to talk him through it. I think I'm the call might end up being that they're going to replay Game 5. The right. entire thing? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's the entire thing or like at stock 2, but I think it might be the whole thing. I'm All right. Sure. And as soon as we get an update, I would love to hear what's going down on that. My, my hope for this scenario, my hope for this scenario is just we see ourselves... I just want to see both the players approach this with a competitive mindset. I mean, let me tell you this, right? Like, no matter what, I feel like for me personally, the the integrity of the set is kind of lost. No matter what, you can't really save it. You know what I mean? Okay, so uh, because we have a walking camera around, we have a mic. So they're reviewing some audio from, like, what's going on in the background to, like, try and get a better idea of what's going on. All right. So. Um, but, yeah... Got a little bit of arguments. Yeah, I mean, I hear I mean, RJ yeah. popping it's, it's off. A touchy, I mean, it's a touchy situation. No, it's, it's a hard one. Yeah, even even Justin's livid about this, too. Well, here's the thing, right? There's listen. there's a right answer. There right? is. There's, and it's, the right answer is put the players in a box. Put the players first. Well, I mean, yeah, that too. In but a box. like, mm -hmm. soundproof, soundproof box. Uh, yeah. But like, <laughs> Can't listen, hear him if I'm RJ, my decision is no matter what, I'm making sure that the people who paid to be here to compete at my event. Get what's best for the both of them. You right. know what I mean? I, no, I, I'm in agreement, too. Like, even though I, I would love nothing more than for Wishes to walk from the set to take a very esteemed win for him, mm -hmm. but no matter what, I would have wanted it under better conditions. At this point in time, though, what's being valued the most is competitive integrity, mm -hmm. the value of the players, their mindscapes, their results. That's what's being held first. That's, what's, that's the right thing to do. I feel like that's not even opinion. That's just... That's just facts. Yeah, that's, that's just facts. That's so how we hold I'm it down. I'm just scumbag. That's facts. And, like... It's, good. it's a hard call to make, but it's it's one that needs to be made. So just as, as a note, just to sort of pick people up on what's going on in the venue, um, thanks to the gen game footage that's being picked up, we're yeah, walking around with a boom, right, we will boom be replaying mic, it. and they're able to, they're replaying the game? Yeah. They are replaying the game. Yeah. Let me confirm if it's the whole game. All right. Okay. All right. So because of the boom mic that's on the walking cam, they are able to find that there were people talking out advice on multiple occasions, not just that. So 
Someone screaming, and they're screaming. All I know is whoever I is that. sitting in the crowd. So upon announcement of saying that they're replay, uh, replaying it, there's now a much hotter debate. And what's that hotter debate? I don't know. Well, the, I mean, there's some people just being against it. The hot one sauce? Well, I mean, it, who, who are Bro. these people? Well, right now, I mean, it's, I'm some sort, it's just like some uh, argument saying it's just like he got up, so he forfeited the match. Because I'm like, to like, me, I I'm like, forfeit. If Wishes is arguing it, that's one thing. But if it's anyone else other than the two competitors, they can get the fuck out. I'm, yeah. I, honestly, I'm gonna be with Flambo on this one. I love, I love the crowd. The crowd is my people. But uh, Tri-State knows that we're above something like that. So stepping up from a set. All right. So we reviewed the audio. All okay. right. Uh, apparently, what happened was there was an interaction when uh, Mars was on was off stage. That okay. uh, when Wish was pushing him off stage multiple times right before he got off, where someone yelled from the crowd three times. When he was on the ledge, he's going to jump onto the stage. I don't know if that constitutes coaching or not. I'm per this is like really a TO's discretion kind of thing because people would say like, yes, it's ESS. She's obviously going to jump onto the stage because that's what the character does 90% of the time. This but that true. still constitutes coaching. Right. According to like in the most broad definition that constitutes coaching and this is ultimately a TO call and I am not jealous of RJ for having to make this call. Okay, let me give you, let nope. me give you an example. So at Civil War yes. for Smash 4, right? I believe it was Pug West versus Pussy King. <laughs> right? Yes. And Pug God. West took the dub because somebody yelled, play safe. Play safe. That is so absurd. That, that's so broad. That right? is so incredible. So if he's going to say he's going to jump, I'm like, that's coaching. If you're so, going to say play safe, it's a call, then he jumped. That's, that's so coaching. So as far as coaching has been defined by the, the Super Smash Brothers community, something as specific as that is constituted under coaching. Play safe, that's something that's very... Honestly, at least my, me myself, I would say that's that's too broad. That's not giving any to particular advice. Mm -hmm. Yes, someone can like get something from that, but that's not something nearly as specific as a ledge option in a high tension situation. Mm -hmm. So now, but there's also like it also comes to the idea of like there's literally four options. If somebody had yelled, he's going to get up, and he jumped instead, would this would this still be an issue? Or like he's watch out for a roll or something like that. That is technically coaching. Yes. But I think this is also like getting way too in depth and way too like. Yeah, no, this is something that it's a case by case situation it where is. ultimately the decision falls on the TO's discretion. If there's one person in this room I wouldn't want to be right now, it's, it's RJ. Because he's the one who's got to pull the rope on the guillotine. It's lose lose. It really is. It, yeah. RJ, it's lose lose. He has half, this crowd, half the crowd that's currently where we're standing on a platform, and that platform has RJ, and now a significant portion of the crowd is up here. Arguing, I'm not sure if our mics can pick it up, if helpers' mics can pick it up, but clearly the crowd is heated. Half the crowd arguing in favor that because Mars had stepped off the the stage, that that counts as forfeiting. But like my uh, thing another is, another half is saying how it should be replayed for the sake of competitive so integrity. Here's the issue: is there's no rule in place for like, okay, there's been a clear violation of the rules, at least in my mind. How do I contest that in the middle of a match? So now that's the important mm. part. Is it in the mind if it's not written down in any way? Because then at that point, it's up to the lead to yo, and that's, of course, RJ. Because if there was a rule in place, this is also why I don't like having pause off. This is a personal thing. Mm. If you are like, can I get the TO over here immediately? I have something to contest. You guys go to opposite sides and you pause the game so you can pick it up exactly where you left it off. If the TO is like, no, we're not resetting. But now we either have to run back the whole match because it's going to be unfair to put them back in the exact same situation, or... We don't play it, and uh, Wishes gets the win because Mars was contesting something, and he did it in the most like obvious way possible. But it's also like Wishes also probably shouldn't have killed Mars immediately. I don't know. It's like there's it's, so many rules, like no, yeah, just as consequences of other rules. Like you don't get up, you don't leave your controller because that is technically forfeiting the game. You know, yes. it's like I don't know, because there's part of me that's like I don't know. <laughs> like, 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 there's, That's the thing, man. there's no headsets, one can right? Like, generally, like, you know, it's like, okay, we got headsets. You don't even got to hear the crowd, right? But they're not playing with headsets. No, these are both, these are both players who play off the crowd. So it's like, just as Mars well, is an emotionally driven player, has his wishes. He feeds on that energy. When he hears his his state, his voice rooting for him, that powers him up. That's yeah. the kind of player who really rolls with that. So. You have a situation where it's not as easy as saying they have their headsets on, they couldn't right. have heard but it anyway. It's also like this collision venue 
is like pretty homely. You know what I mean? Like, right. let's say it's like a, a stadium or something, and there's like someone in the crowd saying, he's going to jump. There's like all these people surrounding you. It's yeah, like no, whatever. It gets drowned even, out. But even, he's so close to the player. Even presuming that the suspect at hand that was giving off this the, the advice in their cheering was like in the back seat of the crowd, even at that, that's what, maybe 20 feet away? Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe 20 feet? And in a heated argument, when you're aware of everything, your senses are just being overridden by everything that's going on. Everyone's cheering so loud. You see New England popping off. You see Jersey popping off. Everyone is in the heat of the moment. You're hearing that all. It doesn't matter how far he is if they're all loud. Okay. <sighs> so... It, yeah, this is just a terrible situation. This really yeah. is. Because, like, is. I'm not going to front. There's one, uh, on one hand, if we play the match back, it's probable that Wishes is going to lose just because that's extremely demoralizing as a player to have to play back a match. So you're like, I clearly won this because the guy forfeited. It's over. I'm holding that W. I'm going to contest this all the way to the end, and I'm going to die on this hill. But Mars is also like, I also understand Mars' point of view, and there's also the fact that, like, when you're playing and you hear someone yell an option, you're yeah. going to do that option half the time just out of, like, instinct. Yeah, no, it's 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 a rough situation because, yeah. of course, both the players are going to want it. And it's it's hard no matter what happens. Yeah. Like, best case scenario for those in the crowd who do want Wishes to win is that they play it back and then Wishes takes it fair and square. But no matter what, there's no momentum behind either of these players. Their mindsets are going to be muddied no matter the cost. It's, it's rough. Because I'm like, not only was it that scenario, but it's also game five. Yeah, you that's know, another game thing. Five, penultimate stocks, like. And this is from top six. Oh. This is a top eight winner side qualifier, yes? So I'm actually going to check the replays and excuse me just to see. Go for it. All right. Helper on the house deck. So we'll okay, see Okay, so we this got. is where it actually started kind of happening was in this area when, uh, when, when uh, Mars was off the stage. No, actually, it was before that. Let me see. Maybe no, yeah, before. that's where he rushes off. No, it's not in here. That's unfortunate. Uh, I was really? really hoping for that whole interaction because basically what happened was Mars was on the ledge. He, he basically gets hit, he gets hit off the ledge when he jumps off. And apparently two more times after that. And you can tell in the first time that it happened, Mars is like, yo, stop coaching. He like, yells into the crowd, yo, stop coaching. And someone persisted to do so after that. Whether they couldn't hear Mars or not is very possible because we couldn't hear him, obviously. Right. Like, yeah, I no, had with, my headset with headphones off. on, I had, well, I had only seen people standing up. I was only aware that there is a crowd there. What they were saying is completely unknown to any of us in production right now. Like, remember, I'm actually sitting 10 feet away from them. Like, literally 10 feet away. I was not wearing headsets because I was paying attention to the crowd. I was paying attention to everything because I'm trying to, like, run stuff in the background. I could not hear Mars. So maybe the person that was coaching, quote-unquote coaching, couldn't hear him. That's a very real possibility. But that whole idea of they persisted after he made the complaint is a very real thing. Oh, man, we're going to get someone else in here. They're what? They're oh, playing they're going to the run now? the audio, guys. Oh, all right. Oh, well. Gen all Game right. Tech added again. Here we go. Team Ags with running, let's hear the, it. running the audio, too. All right, let's so, hear it, guys. So uh, turn, the, turn those headphones up for those. Turn those speakers up for everybody listening. Remember, this is the crowd mic. This is the crowd boom mic. Okay, yeah. I mean, come on, man. Like that. To me, that's clear as night and day. Like, yeah. yeah. yeah we even see Mars jump up to tell him to stop while also playing. Yeah. He manages to still play. So that's even before he gets up and pops off about what's going on. So it's very clear that Mars is directing, like. Yeah, like it's. <sighs> the situation still sucks because even if we're like, yeah, that's clearly coaching, that's kind of night and day. The players are not going to feel that way, mm. and they never will. And it's like you can't even blame them for that. You can't. You cannot blame them for that. But it's a consequence of a sport where we try to accentuate spectators. Is that sometimes the spectators are going to do something really dumb? Yeah. And that's going to end up shooting the players in the foot. Uh, 
I mean, RJ, they're still arguing this. Uh, we can just turn the camera real quick. Because yeah, if, if you guys want to yeah. cut to the, the roaming cam. Well, yeah, and oh, like we'll show my Nairo and Mr. R and everybody. Oh, no, everyone has been, there's actually yeah, been a solid cool. army of at least 15 to 20 mm -hmm. players going just back going and forth it, on this shoe. I see Law in the crowd. I see Player 4 is out there, Soul Arts, uh, Z, Nairo. Uh, Mr. R was up here earlier. Gons okay. here. Literally, like, literally every player, like, uh, literally every player that uh, that has an opinion is like chiming in right yeah. now. Yeah, everybody wants to get their two cents in. But for me, I care most about those two players, Mars and Wishes. What they th think on it is they like, have exactly opposite sentiments. They do. So they're both not. Neither of them are going to be happy because Wishes is like this Wishes man got up and he forfeited. Which is, is technically correct. Well, he forfeited because oh, yeah. he did not get the TO in the correct way. Oh, yeah, under under the the is that correct though? Because I'm that like, is. what do you mean? Standing up doesn't necessarily mean you forfeit. S standing up isn't. But he walked away. Standard. He walked away from his controller. He walked away from the stage. That's considered forfeiting under the the general rules of Super Smash Bros. But at the same time, like actually, yeah, like, yeah, like, like yes. if I look at the collision rule set, it'll say that explicitly that walking away. For collision, no. But I know in the, the Smash well, I mean, recommended rule set, but okay. that, that's okay. the thing. That's the unspoken rule kind of thing yeah, where you lit, if he had stayed with his controller in his hand, he was like, wishes, please stop. I'm putting down my controller. I need to I need to talk to the TO. Then he would have had a, a case for like stopping it and not forfeiting it. But then he walked away. So that makes it really difficult. Yeah. Ah. But I'm like, I don't know. If somebody's like being aggy, Oh, yeah, that's, and you're like, that's, 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 that's game yeah. five. Like, am I expected to be like, I'm going to be exactly completely calm? Well, hey, excuse me. Well, which that's, is, I mean, that's, that's the problem is that like, you have to keep a cool it's, head. it's impossible to expect the players to perform like anything lo like logical in this kind of a situation. Of course, All right, it makes perfect sense in the world that Mars would want to get to RJ immediately. Right. Just put everything down and get RJ to talk because that's the tension of the situation. Now, Another thing is, is that there's no explicit rules about if that's coaching or if that's forfeiting. True. So both players are equally right and wrong in this situation, which, which is why this is such a debate, which is why this is taking so long, which is why none of this is really okay. Like, no matter the case, it's, it's a really hard break for both of them. And in general, it's a heartbreaker because it's been such a good setup to this point. So now, I feel like regardless of the situation, a lot of that magic is lost in the moment. But yeah. I feel like it's important for us to take this time because it sets a precedent moving onwards about what needs to be done. Let me also say that that set was probably the best set I've seen today. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's set. another thing. You know, Mars that's has been dope adapted set. beautifully. I mean, Pelka, good set as well. But I mean, that's I was like, man, like I feel blue balls <laughs> beyond belief. <laughs> There's no uh, catharsis here. Yeah. <laughs> Just no, like, yeah. But, like, like even if we step away from competitive integrity and whatnot, mm -hmm. we lost a beautiful set to this. Like, yeah, this is going to be one of those things people are going to mention, like in two or three years. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah, this is why you have to have this specific rule like, even, for the specific scenario. Even with, with Pug versus Pussy King, like that set in the grand scheme of Civil War is inconsequential. Both of them did nothing in that tournament. Not to discredit both of them, but I'm definitely going to discredit the shit out of them. <laughs> but <laughs> the, the ruling that was made on that is what's remembered. Little instances like that are held onto history, especially in Smash, a scene that holds so dearly to its legacy. So, this is this is a decision. That's why <laughs> this is a decision that's going to be a, like a landmark decision. I mean, I think either way, like no matter where what, what decision oh, no RJ be, makes, I don't think no one's going to. Oh, blame no one's going to be happy because no matter what happens, yeah. no matter the decision that's made, Mars is never going to be happy because it happened in the first place. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wishes is never going to be happy because it happened in the first place. Definitely, they had that set taken from them. Yeah, you can't give that back. Um. Yeah. So uh, I mean, it's kind of where we're sitting right now. We just with have that to wait. said, <laughs> hello everybody. Welcome to Collision 2019. <laughs> of course, you have if your big boy Flan Beasy joined by Hangman, and of course, all of the Gen Gaming and House of 3000 crew here Lux. to hold it down. And Lux, yeah, what's popping, Lux? Lux still that holding it down. Miss boys. I'm glad I got <laughs> <laughs> Literally he scapegoated me. Yo, oh he scapegoated. He said, yo, let's get a commentator me. switch Lux so I can screw Flambo. And it was bad juju. We had a good <laughs> thing going, Lux. Oh, man. Gen game in class tournaments. Oh, it was beautiful. I mean, look at this. Yesterday I asked for Fiji, specifically not pure life. What is this? This is pure life. It was, it was three cases for $10. I mean, that's why I made sure I got the Poland. Because at least I'm not going to go down to a... Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to survive the day. I mean... Same. I'm looking get to get the job done. We got the big boy can. 
Mm. Magnum energy. All right, guys, remember to stay hydrated when you're playing video games and when you're streaming and talking about video games. You got to stay hydrated. Yep. Especially when you're clicking that follow button for House of 3000 across all social media. <laughs> Yo, Nestle, Paul and Smitty, uh, if you guys are listening, this is a great sponsorship opportunity <laughs> if you want to sponsor House of 3000. Honestly, 3, can we talk about how there's <laughs> infinite money to be made about sponsoring tournaments with, with water? Yes, everyone is. I do so many players have said that. It's like, yo, guys, why isn't anybody talking about sponsoring tournaments with water? Who cares about Red Bull? Water is where it's at. You need this That's to That's actual facts. Like, this is garbage, but it's what's giving me energy. This is what's actually keeping me alive. True. I have several discarded bottles below me. Like, <laughs> what, water gets the job done. There's a graveyard down there. Alive. That's how it be. <laughs> I mean, it's a graveyard in here, too. Nestle Pure, like, kind of ass, but it's cheap. Man. And it looks like, at least to some extent... We'll know a decision's made when half the crowd erupts. Yeah. Though I, I will say that the, the, the emotions have at least died down a little bit in the room. People are still talking, yeah, still no, huddling, it's... but that initial wave has definitely kind of hit the... Well, yeah, because when everybody was really getting into it, we saw... I genuinely thought hands were about to fly. I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of he people heated about the decision at first. If but hands now... were flying, I would have dropped the mic and hopped in, bro. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is that it always comes down to region lines. This is literally New England versus New York, and like every New York player, slash New Jersey player came up and was like, Wish has clearly won that by forfeit, and all the uh, New England players came up and were like, I mean, I would consider that coaching, I guess. So uh, it's like, uh It's also like clearly won, like from my perspective, I'm like, bro, it was like, he had an entire another stock that's untouched. Like, clearly once kind of, but I know what you mean, like uh, no, by, yeah. by, by, by rules and technicalities. and Yeah, by technicalities, by technicalities, like, Mars is wrong for stepping away from the set, but Mars had every right to do so because of what was happening behind him. I feel, to, to be honest, I feel the most bad for Wishes because he has no control over his his friends and regional like colleagues yeah. cheering for him like that. I mean, part yeah. of this is just a, a, a grassroots thing, right? Because if this was like I don't know some sort of like other sport, you could just like flag down the referee. You know what There'd I mean? There'd be you pages and like pages of litigation so to look exactly, at. Exactly right, but you'd be able to point. Oh, this instance happened. This, this, and this. Here's what was done then. Here's what we're doing now. It's by the book, done and over with. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a price of brevity. Is like you want to make this. So that's not it's not like a tome that people have to read before mm -hmm. they go to an event. That's also why the TO's discretion rule exists, which is why this has become a whole discussion. Is because now the way that you're going to win this set is by convincing RJ to go one way or the other, which I mean he already kind of did, but then people appealed it. So now we're waiting on that. Nairo. Yeah, actually, it looks like Nairo's the closest to the action right now. Can you grab Nairo so we yeah. can at least get, like... I mean, RJ is making... Oh, it looks like he's going to the All other right. side. It looks oh, like he's making wishes. A decision is being made, it seems. Mars in too hype. Oh, man. Oop. Yeah, oh, no, they're getting loud. Oop. That means oh. something's happening. I think, oh. uh, I think RJ just pitched to have Mars play with a stock penalty. No, that's stupid. Like a one <laughs> stock drop. That's actually stupid. Like a one stock. Like a, he's basically down a stock versus wishes because he technically did forfeit by leaving the game area. But I don't know. That kind of sucks, but I don't. I don't know if you can. All just right. Come so, so here's the thing with that. At least just to like talk about. See, let's isolate that situation just to discuss that. Someone stepping away from a set counts as forfeiting either a stock or a game. That's to discretion. In in my in my history, I've never seen a smash game uh, where I lose a set from someone doing that. Yeah. So to take a game because I would, would say just if you're gonna do that, just redo the set, but make wishes be up one up. That's how I would do it. If you're gonna See, try to take that redoing that route. the set's gonna be hard. But they were doing already this, Yeah, it was already into the game five situation. So redoing the game five. They're either redoing the last game or they're gonna do it with some kind of penalty. Uh, but it's like Mars. Sh I don't feel like Mars should be penalized for contesting something that's against the rules. It's just the way that he did it was incorrect. Yeah, no. If anything, uh, All right, I'm going to put Devin like... on because he was actually listening closely. Right, Devin, yeah. please tell us what's going on. Give us a scoop. D3K on the mic. Hey, guys. So... I think... So right now, RJ's just calling all the TO to, like, kind of, like, get them all on the same page. But uh, right now, I think there was an initial decision to do two stock to one stock, which is to... Uh, that's where the set was technically thing. left yeah. off. Not really, because so the thing, he lost so the argument was like, wish it's at two stocks, but he was also at like a billion percent. Yeah, he was at really high percent. There was a lot of time right. clock so down. Right, so if it would be two fresh stocks, it was like two stock fresh and one stock fresh. Mm -hmm. That's like a lot more. Um, so, yeah, so right now there's like a little bit more of a push for it to be just two stocks 
both. And uh, I, I kind of agree with that. Two stocks, yeah. both. Fresh. On a technical standpoint, two Smash stocks four, both baby. penalizes both players for the actions they're responsible for. Yeah. Well, wishes, quote unquote, for coaching. Mars, quote unquote, well, for forfeiting. I mean, but the thing is, that's not on wishes, though. That's that's it the is. thing. It's yeah, but that's like, like outside I guess forces. From a perspective, it's like, okay, what did wishes do wrong? No, that's what Nothing, I'm saying right? as well. Is like wishes didn't do any. He, he's not responsible for people like coaching him in the crowd. Right. So him being held accountable for someone else's actions really sucks. But at the same time, like in the same you can't game, just have them start at their stocks and then beat wishes until he's at that ludicrously high percent. That's just comical. Yeah. We can't do something like that. But like, yeah. I, I, because yeah, because you start neutral. Part, part of me kind of feels like doing two stocks a piece would even it up just because like so. if you look at it at least on paper zero suits not doing much at a zero percent target yeah, there's also the fact that like when something like this occurs right if you want to say you want to restart at that exact moment like trying to pretend it's a safe state of that moment you the players do aren't doing yeah that. the players you have to that. rewind slightly before like, we you already, just have to we already talked about this what five so. ten minutes ago both yeah. of these guys are going to be emotional wrecks coming into this it's going to be like watching two dead fish flop around all right so uh, it's uh, yeah. I don't want to discard it because they have been playing yeah. fantastically up at this this point. But you you and I know damn well they're not going to be playing well coming into this. Yeah, no. And no matter the result, they're going to be salty about whatever the hell happens. If Mar even if Mars loses it fair and square, he's not going to be happy that he's had to get frozen for nearly half an hour at this point. Yeah. Wish is coming hot off of how well he's been playing thus far. He's also been frozen. They they lose the most out of all. Of I'm going to try and speed up the decision making. Because we do have a tournament to run. We do. And, uh, have we been recording, by the way? Oh, yeah. This Gosh. is going to be great reference <laughs> for future. Uh, yeah. In history, I guess. <laughs> I'll, sh I'll show it later. <laughs> right. It be like that sometimes. It, honestly, it no. It really do. Not on this time. Well, I mean, it yeah, don't be like that. That's why we're here. <laughs> so they're counting it as a 2-2 two -two piece with two stocks. That's the call. Yeah, and T-Mags and Ajax just you relayed that two, to us. You said two stocks? Two stocks each. I might just make RJ come over here and say it himself. Yeah, honestly, helper, could you do me a f do us a favor? Get RJ over here to explain his ruling. That way, it's it's recorded. Everybody hears it mm -hmm. from his mouth. Because we we have had at least a dozen people come over here to to help us yeah. with the situation. Yeah, De Devin, we're gonna have RJ come up just so he could say yeah, it himself. Sure. I feel like even it's like, gonna be it's gonna be two two with two, two stocks. Piece, yep. Yeah. So uh, I'll try and get RJ to. Come over here. <sighs> Be right back. Okay. And, you know, the, the, the thing is, uh, it's, like, it, it's heartbreaking on so many levels. Oh, right? abso absolutely. I mean, aside from the fact that we have two amazing competitors, we had been talking about a lot yesterday how a tournament like this is really setting the stage for uh, the old guard to show that they still got it and for the new people to come up and show that they know how to play too, right? Like, the lights had to come out of nowhere first. First, they were nobodies. And then they became Light. You say Light's name now, everybody knows who Light is. But there was a moment way before where he couldn't even win an Arcadian. But now, now, you've got someone like Wishes who people hadn't heard of until recently, making a name for himself. And it feels like that opportunity to really like solidify himself in the books may be happening for the wrong reason. But it's like we're going to have RJ probably hop on over here unless someone's going to like, well, we'll see. Um, yeah, all right, so. RJ putting on the headset, so give him a moment to, to oh, say yeah. what's up. So, yeah. RJ, share okay. your piece. So, what's happening is that Mars was looking for me mid-set when it was still two versus two on the stock count. And the issue was that the crowd, the venue's large, but the venue is still in a closer proximity, and no one is wearing headphones on the thing, on the actual stream itself. There were multiple people in the crowd, and I did review the video because we have a walking camera. Yeah, God bless. What if we didn't have that? Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It would have been a lot worse. And basically what was happening is that they were telling him, like, oh, he's going to jump now. He's going to jump now. It did happen three times in the span of 45 seconds. So at the 45-second mark, Mars was like, okay, where's RJ? He was actively looking for me at that point. But I was reporting matches in the back, so I didn't hear him. I only saw him when he got up and became a big, bigger issue than when right. he was. So I was trying to determine if we were going to do it either completely over again from two or two or one and two when he actually stood up. And I had to review the video and watch it over and over again. So that's basically what happened. Now what's happening is that Wishes refuses to play. So Wishes is saying to DQ him. 
if that's going to be the case. So I'm going to go try to talk to Wishes. I did also call all the TOs on staff and all the commentators to actually collectively vote on the situation. And this is basically what we all came up with. So we wanted to start off with a two-stock, two-stock match playing game five. So that's the situation. And now I'm going to go find Wishes to see if he's really going to DQ himself or if he's going to continue playing. I'm just going to let you know, RJ, I would hate to be you right now, but I love you, yeah. man. Thanks for having me. But man, do I not envy your position <laughs> right now. Absolutely not. Oh, I don't even envy my position right now. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh. <laughs> We're in the hot seat for this. Yeah, I'm, whole I'm thing. No, it's, it's cool, All bro. Right, so, uh, that's, that's the case. Now it's a matter on whether or not Wishes is going to replay the the match. It's. I mean, they made it sound like Wishes already like was sticking to his guns and was going to forfeit if he had to replay it, which is. Uh, Why? Because what Wishes do doesn't feel like it was his fault that this happened, I guess. Which it's not. That is but fair. I'm like, I, I, I mean, don't some know. people are making it sound like. I don't know if that's actually factually what's happening, but more likely than not, someone's outside right now talking to Wishes, who's probably fuming about this whole yeah, situation. Yeah, he, he's yeah. probably in his emotions because, from my perspective as someone who's not the competitor, right? I'm just like, well, yeah, if like, you're gonna DQ yourself and lose anyway, may as well just like actually lose the match, right? That's my yeah, like, view as, we, as someone else. But I'm not the competitor. We I'm have not the, the position of sitting scenario. here from a neutral position. Exactly. Like, well, I wouldn't even say neutral. Like, we have our biases, yeah, but we still have to, like, we have to weigh everything Yeah. still. So it's like, it's... Because in my head, that's the objectively better thing to do for yourself no matter what. But... I also feel that Wishes should be able to replay it because I genuinely feel, if given the chance, he could take the set fair and square. Mind you, I think so, Mars, too. Mars was playing... He managed to... He was on almost, the verge of a reverse 3 out. Yeah. Like, they were both playing really well. The problem is, is that they're not going to be playing with that kind of fervor coming back into this. You know that both of them are going to be shattered. No matter what, Wishes is going to be heated. And even if Mars has cooled himself down from this point, he's still going to be agitated. Like, they're... There really is no compromise that can make everyone happy in this situation. Oh, man. Right. Yeah. Now, I'm genuinely curious, has anything happened off stream? Has any sets moved on? Has Well, the, the buzz uh, and uh, I can't really tell who that is. I, the buzz is blocking the view a little bit. Damn it, the buzz. <laughs> oh, on the, the Nyram K streams going live still? Yeah, they are. They actually okay. they kept playing because why would they stop completely for us yeah, for no, more than like ten minutes? No, that's, Jesus. <laughs> no, that, that's that's good. That's good. No, I'm I'm happy because I was just wondering if there's any results that we can report on to anyone who's been chilling in the stream with us, anyone who might not be checking out the Smash GG, figure out how the rest of the tournament is advancing because this is still you know. Oh my God, are you kidding me? This deep in bracket. This is probably a joke, but this is a thing apparently that wishes tweeted immediately like. I mean, it seems... Actually, no, that did happen, though, to be fair. I remember that exact thing. I don't know if that's the reason why he did that it, but I remember that specific instance. Do you actually? I do. Uh, you to quote, where he apparently he deleted it, by the way, like immediately mm. after like this started becoming a thing. But the tweet says, I flare blitz and missed. Someone in the crowd yelled, yo, do it again. So I did, and I won the set. But the thing was also in that scenario... But I don't if think I recall correctly, I think he was up at least a stalker, too. Like, it didn't really matter. No, yeah, he was on the blitz, verge of three stock. That was Dark Wizzy. Mm. Me and Lux were taking yeah. care of that because that's where he returned to stage flare blitzing, came back to flare blitz, and Wizzy charged his flood, rolled back. Which rolled is a very, back and then got hit by the It's a very blitz, typical yeah. habit of Wizzy's. If you watch how he plays, he'll usually roll back after getting flood, He'll you, and then he'll like cancel it and use an attack as the mix-up. Like, that's the typical mm -hmm. flow chart, if you will. So, in that kind of a situation, I don't even know if I, like, I guess that could be coaching. I, to me, that's vague enough that I wouldn't count it. But also, if that's an admittance to taking advice and winning off of it, then you have to weigh that out on its own. That's on its yeah. own merits. We're not even there. Because that's like, oh, snap, do we got to go pull up Dark Wizzy now? And say, but, but the thing is, like, you know. Nah, Wizzy, Wizzy's chilling with Excal. I mean, yeah. Let the man live. Yeah. <laughs> he's still alive in the loser's bracket. I don't know what he's doing. The thing is, like, it comes back to the whole idea of, like, is somebody yelling, do a move? technically coaching in the crowd like and how do you like yeah your opponent may hear that but i don't think i would have personally yeah it's, it's a case-by-case -case basis that's that's the key out of all of this is that there is no hundred percent cut and dry way that anyone would respond because like for me myself i don't play with headphones but i don't hear anything but the game whenever yeah. i play 
So yeah. it doesn't matter if someone told me the perfect advice, the perfect option mm. each and every time. I would just hear white noise. I would just know someone saying something. I wouldn't know what they were saying. The other thing is, it's like, imagine you're like on the couch with your boys and you're watching the Super Bowl, right? And it's like, oh, man, he clearly should have just done this. Or he should have just, like, thrown it to that guy. Randy Moss is waiting in the couch end zone. Why didn't he do it? But couch it's like, coaching goes reason. back as far as They're there, sports, man. and the players are out there, right? You know what I mean? Like, how, how do you weigh what that person's saying? You know what I mean? It's like one thing if you have, like, let's say uh, back in the day when it was, like, uh, Zero and, like, Pierce or something. If Pierce was sitting there being like, hey, Zero, do this. Well, it's like, oh, crap, that's his coach saying something explicitly during the set. That's not – gonna fly but if it's just like i don't know who it was that said yeah, or whatever the line like, was it could have, how do you give him any weight like it could have been someone as close as a friend of his as ralphie or it could have been just a random new jersey shitter it doesn't matter who it was it was someone saying something repeatedly with the intent I of another water Damn it. <laughs> with the intent of making Pure sure that like they were trash hurt. is, trash. is that agua hey listen it's not that flint water that like poland spring oh my guys let's not get political Dying politics. <laughs> Dying very politics. Oh, my God. <laughs> Lead pipe is the most political thing I can think of. Bro. God, I'm so sorry for those people, and that sucks. Yeah, same. Still? God, still. I would like to thank the viewers at home, though, for sticking through yeah, with us this Yeah, if you're watching time. this stream. You're watching history in the making, very slowly in the making, but nonetheless, because... Hey guys, if you agree with Flambo, follow him at like over here. Oh, yeah. If you agree with Hangman, follow don't, him over here. Don't and do this to us. <laughs> on Twitter. Do that though. House didn't do nothing. So, I carry that. Follow House Gen Game on Twitter too. Me every single day of the week. Can we run another this way, this way. House at three thousand. Man. Damn it. Damn it. Here we go. I think they want to run another match on the stream during this. Honestly, they should, they got to run. There's there's more to this bracket, right? Like, I haven't whipped it out. The, the tablet's yeah, no, not on. So, over on Nairo MK, a lot of other matches are occurring as well, I, I think. Uh, yeah, that's the buzz and fellow with a hood. I can't recognize that nose. All I see is a nose and a hood. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do, because this is taking forever, is we're going to run a different set in a few minutes. Right. We're going to run a different set. If they do come back and play the set, we're just going to stitch it. We're just going to run it. We're going to stitch it together and post. It'll be on YouTube. YouTube.com right. slash House of 3000. All right, so <laughs> as opposed to the typical house tradition where a set will go up immediately, this one's going to be treated a little bit different. So make sure to hang tight. If you're watching the VOD, Trying to find the end of the set. Just no, it's going to be in one. It's going to be on the VOD. So basically, after we basically sign off of this VOD, we'll stitch it together. So it'll be the last part of this VOD. And that's so if you guys are wondering why, this is a one hour, 10 minute set. This is why. Enjoy. So hope you like what you heard so far. Make right. sure to uh, stay tuned in. All right, guys. We're going to be going on with Raptor versus King Arc. Uh, we will see you in Yo. the future. So we're back with the set. We're going to be rerunning oh. it. It's going to be uh, It's oh. going to be Wishes two stocks at 130 damage and Mars at one stock 0%. So they're doing the damage and yeah. We're going to reset the playing fields. Okay, so Wishes I guess did ultimately decide to play, and he's going for the pummels here so he can get the exact percentage. Oh, I like this too. He's staying on the second stock to get the damage up so that when he kills off to get the first stock, he... Everything's fresh. Yes. Keep everything fresh. I like it. <laughs> I especially appreciate the fact that they're waiting for the right transition in Town and City too. All right. They're even doing the countdown, and we're going right back into it. This is Town and City. Everyone has revitalized themselves. New Jersey rallying behind Wishes. New England rallying behind Mars. This is game five, Flambo. And, and, and it says even as here it gets we right, are. Plasma Whip. And it's giving me flashbacks to back in the day when you'd have your crew battles in Tri-State and you didn't Nintendo would say three, two, one, 
quit life. They are out for blood because there is so much behind this set now because of all the mishappenings that happened in this game five. But hey, we're going to run it back and Mars is looking to try and prove that, hey, this was the game for me to take. Which is saying, no, I should have taken that game and I wanted to cure it for myself. I know I can do it. Both of these players are so talented. And now, the winner's side life is on the line. The winner of this set moves on to fight Nairo, and that means so much for both of these players. Mars and Nairo have consistently been in contest for who is the better Zero Suit in Smash 4, and now in this game, just who's the top dog? Which one of them is the better representative of their region? And wishes? Which one between him and Nairo can better represent the strength of New Jersey in a bracket like this? He has to find a way down. A beautiful parry from Mars, but he can't convert into anything. Mars is sitting at 95, and he has to watch his landing because you know what Ivysaur can do. That stun spore up air is so potent of a tool that he needs to make sure he's finding any way around it that he can, and luckily he has that flip kick. Here's our bunny now, but coming in from the ledge. Up throw. He has to watch out for the up throw. All right, both of them coming back. It's a matter of seeing what he can do. Sarah the Ledge, once again, it's gonna be picking off Wishes, and it's such a good move to do so, especially against Charizard. Ooh, he's but fishing for it. look at how patient Wishes is. He's waiting for his time to kill. He whiffs it. He gets the boost kick, Not but enough. he is still alive. Oh, but he's dead now, baby. Mars saying, I'm gonna take that game, but it's gonna be very bittersweet for the people. You heard how silent the crowd got after Mars was able to take that. They wanted Wishes to win so of bad course. and but you know. look at the camera the respect between these two players they know the situation they're in isn't the best but the respect between the two of them as combatants cannot be ignored you know and no one really looks happy not even new england looks happy you know what i mean that's our boy but he's not too happy about it mars come through big dog you don't want to he don't want to no. He don't want to. Give him, give him space. He, he needs it. No, because like, like I was saying, it's not the kind of situation any player wants to be. Mars, we've, we've spoken about this mm -hmm. previously. An emotionally driven player, he's very prideful. He knows what he's capable of. He knows on fair ground he could have beaten Wishes. And Wishes the same way. But this is where we stand But now. that was winner's side. That is indeed winner's so who, side. Who knows, man? You know, so I like to believe... That anything can happen. Maybe of course. they'll get a chance and lose us to do it again. Mars mentioned a while ago, you know, an hour ago. Oh, it was yeah. just like, it'd be really awkward if I bump into him in losers. <laughs> Yo, someone get Dill on that real quick. <laughs>